All right, good evening, good evening, good evening, 49er fans. So, um, just checking in with y'all. We're going to give a few little updates. We got probably just a couple weeks before training camp. Looks like we're about two weeks out to be exact. As far as concern, yeah, because we start on the 28th. Two weeks. Training camp is coming. Football's almost here, man. I'm happy. You know why? Because I've been waiting for Niner football all fucking year. And I am so tired of waiting. So, we're going to talk about some good things today. You know what I'm saying? Some things that may not be so great, but still mostly some good things. You know what I'm saying? Good things is, as you can see, most of the other videos contain the other Niner hat. Now, that Niner hat that I had has been through everything with me you know i mean and now it's like a workout hat i use that joint as soon as i put it on my head to feel motivation but i had to get something fresh something new something i could wear every day you know what i'm saying so if y'all don't see this right here you know what i'm saying got this at the hat club this is a brand new niner hat i love it it's fresh you know what i'm saying feels good um you know along with the fresh haircut always make you feel good um so we're going to get into this, you know what I'm saying? Basically, um, you know, on NinersNation.com, so we basically kind of going to look at some of these Madden rings for a couple of our players. So honestly, you know, in the 90-plus club, we got Uncle Sherm, we got Mr. Kittle, and we got Joe Staley. Now, Uncle Sherm is 93 overall, but he deserves that, you know what I'm saying? Because Uncle Sherm is Uncle Sherm. So there's nothing more to be said about that. Kittle is a 90 feel like that kind of lowballed him, but he's in the 90 club, so I can appreciate it. The reason I feel like they lowballed him is because outside of Travis Kelsey, they have another tight end that's just as good as George Kittle, and I'll give that a second. Exactly. Ain't nobody better than George Kittle. Not even Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey only better than George Kittle because he got more touchdowns. He didn't have nowhere near the yardage. He didn't have any kind. Of, he definitely didn't have the yak. Nobody had the yak that George Kittle did. Nobody. Not even receivers. And that's their position. That's what they do. George Kittle got a block. He got to go catch passes. He got to make sure he knocks somebody on their ass every now and then. Like, come on, man. George Kittle is a very, he is a complete tight end. And it's extremely rare you find those. So, and then Joe Staley, <laughs> Staley belongs in the 90 club like this. <laughs> I there's nothing else to say about that. Staley is a great, one of the greatest left tackles you've ever had that football has ever seen. And he's a mainstay. He's never left the Niners. Ever. We never let him go anywhere. And he's never been in jeopardy of leaving in. He never heard no reports. Oh, they're going to trade Joe Staley. Oh, looks like they're drafting Joe Staley's replacement. None of that shit. Because Staley is fucking Iron Man. That motherfucker lives forever. So, moving on rapidly. In the 80-plus club... Our number one guy is DeForest Buckner. He's an 87. I feel like Buckner got low ball. I feel like he could be in the 90 club, but because, you know, he's one of those underrated pass rushers, you know what I'm saying? 12 sacks is nothing to laugh at. Um, but what? because he's an underrated pass rusher, I feel like, you know, that's why they gave him an 87. You know, what I really wish Madden would do is allow players to actually go to EA Sports, you know what I'm saying, and work with the dude from sports science to be able to show their actual ratings, you know what I'm saying? And like do certain things to show what they can and can't do and how they really move and what's really going on. If they could do that, they would get these ratings a lot better. I guarantee you. Because Keith was pretty pissed off about his strength. And basically said he was weak and, you know, mostly they gave him certain things, you know, that's pretty shitty. But uh, moving on, so we got Robbie Gold. I'm going to get to him in a second. Robbie goes in 85, Juice is in 85, D. Ford's in 84, Tevin Coleman 83, Marquise Goodwin 83, McGlinchey 83, Breida 82, uh, Jarek McKinnon is in 82, Verrett's in 82, Dante Pettis is in 80, and Tart is in 80. Now, there are some of these guys that I can say, okay, I understand why they're there. The reason that you see Verrett drop to an 82 is because Verrett hasn't been healthy. Had Verrett been healthy all these years, Verrett would have been like fucking like 90, 93, 94, like Uncle Sherm. But, you know, you got to be healthy to do so. I'll get to him as well. Um, as far as Matt Breida, 
I feel like that's fair because, you know, he's off and on injured, so it's kind of unfortunate for him, but still, when he plays, oh, my God, like, just ridiculous. Um, fair rating for McKinnon. Um, I feel like he should probably be in the higher 80s, like the mid-80s, rather than just an 83. But we'll see. We'll see what the year brings for him, you know what I'm saying? It was pretty sad because of the situation that we had where it came to, you know, our receivers not really reaching 1,000 yards or barely, not none of them even getting to 500. So, um, you know, it's basically a situation where, you know, you could just have to understand the rest of these guys where they are. McKinnon wasn't healthy, so you got to let him be. Um, Dante Pettis, Dante Pettis is going to be climbing. By next year's Madden, Dante Pettis will be at least a 90 to 93, guaranteed. Because if y'all ain't seen that man working out, boy, 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 Pettis is looking like a beast this year. He's going to be be nasty for defensive backs. He's going to give people fits. They're going to be upset. They're going to be thinking like, oh, man, we got this dude, you know what I'm saying? We got film on him. We got this. We got that. You're not ready. You're not ready for Dante Pettis. You're not ready. Mark my words. So, next up in the 70 Club, we got Quan Alexander, 78. Armstead, 78. Bosa, 78. Garoppolo, 78. Kendrick Bourne, 78. Uh, sorry, Kendrick Moore, 75, Jordan Matthews, 75, Mike Person, Lakin Tomlinson, Jimmy Ward, all 75, Raheem Moster, 74, Trent Taylor, 74, Solomon Thomas, 74, Fred Warner, 74, Ronald Blair, 73, Garrett Selleck, 73, uh, Adrian Culver, 73, Michael Smith, 73, Kawan Williams, 73, Debo is 71, uh, Levine Tolio is 71, Akello is 70, Sheldon Day is 70, and so is Western Bridgeburg. Now, I look at it like this. Juan being the 78 is based off of his previous year's experience because he was injured all of last year. You know, that, that's, I feel like that's what they're going to do. It's going to be fair. Um, as far as Eric Armstead, I mean, that, that's actually fairly generous because Armstead creates pressure, but he doesn't really get a lot of sacks and he doesn't have the stats to back up a higher Madden rating. Madden more so kind of goes off of stats to an extent. Nick Bosa being a 78, I think he's one of the highest rated rookies, um, especially for defense. I think he is the highest rated defensive player coming out on, coming out on Madden. No, no, there's one more guy that's ahead of him. I can't remember who it is, though. Um, Garoppolo being a 78, he wasn't healthy last year. And to be honest with you, because of his sample size, that's probably why they gave him such a, you know, you know they gave him a rating like that. I mean, he's close to an 80, but at the same time, you got to still, you know, respect the 78. That's still generous because he hasn't been healthy. But when he has been healthy, you know, you kind of give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, Jimmy Ward being a 75, shit, I'm, he's lucky he made it into the 70 club. All the times he winds up injured. Um, Moster, Trent Taylor, Solomon Thomas. Um, now, the one person I feel like they disrespected here, he should have been at least in the high 80s club was Fred Warner. Fred Warner was a beast last year, and he was our field general. I feel like that 74 for Fred Warner is a little disrespectful, you know. Um, I feel like he should have been rated a little bit higher, at least in the 80 club, at a bare minimum in the 80s club. Um, as far as uh, Malcolm Smith, that was generous because Smith ain't done shit since he's been with us. And uh, once again, I know everybody likes him, but – it's no disrespect to the man, no disrespect to any, you know, his family, nothing like that. I ain't trying to take food out of his mouth or his family mouth. But we should have cut his ass a long time ago because he ain't been doing shit since he got here. He is not the dude what he, that he was when he was playing with the Legion of Boom. He ain't worth a dime. Um, as far as uh, k one k one probably deserves a 73 because, you know, he's a slot. He's, he's more so our, our, uh, our slot guy, you know. So, if anything, he'll be fighting with Jason Barrett for that slot Uh that, that slot uh, spot, you know, him, DJ Reed, um, Jason Verrett are all great at the slot corner cover uh, position. So you just want to be ready for that. Next up, uh, so Kelly Witherspoon got a 70. I feel like that's fair because he had a lot of regression last year. He started to come on at the end of the year, but because of the regression, that's why they did it. You know, and then they're saying that Garoppolo is the 21st rated, 20, 21st best QB in the NFL, um, you know, and I understand the hesitation until Jimmy plays a full season, 
but they gave Marcus Mariota, Andy Dalton, and Derek Carr, um, and seven other names aren't better than Garoppolo. So Mariota, no, I don't think he's better than Jimmy G, only because the Titans don't do much of anything. You know, um, Andy Dalton, Derek Carr. He had a good year, one year, and then he started to look more like his brother, who I don't respect because he decided that Joe Montana wasn't one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Sorry, he went to the Super Bowl four times and he never lost. Tom Brady's lost in the Super Bowl. See, the comparison is very simple. So if people go into basketball, they say, oh, well, you know, what about LeBron and Jordan? Who's better? Michael Jordan, because he's 6-0. and Michael never went to the finals and lost, ever. Ever, period. Joe went to the Super Bowl. Losing? What the fuck is that? There's no one losing is in the Super Bowl because he doesn't lose. He's 4 0. It's clear. So, you know, I'm just saying, Derek Carr, no disrespect to you, but I mean, a torn, uh, Jimmy G coming off a torn ACL is better than Derek Carr. I'm sorry. I feel like this year we're going to the playoffs. We have to. And we got to get at least into the to the wild card round. And we got to give that wild card game a hell of a fight. And even if we lose, as long as we went out there and we played our ass off, then it's a success of the season. If we don't make the playoffs, no. Somebody got to get fired. I'm going to move on to the next video. This is just one that I'm posting right now. I just figured we do something fun, you know what I'm saying? Talk about something good. So, you know, we got our Madden ratings all done. Um, so hopefully y'all will purchase the game. I know I'm going to purchase it because it got new features and stuff like that. It makes it a little bit better because right now in Madden 19, like, they fucking retire and you don't even know. They don't tell you they retire. Like, there's no possibility. There's no hint. Like, they don't, you don't get, like, a little message on Madden that says, hey, I'm thinking about retiring. I look up and DeForest Buckner done retire. But then at the same time, I done won, like, seven Super Bowls in a row, you know, and I'm trying to play on the hardest level of Madden at all. So, it, it just depends, you know. But um, this new one, basically, yeah, man, they got a lot more features. And it's, it's more interactive as far as the players, what they want, um, contracts, all kinds of stuff like that. The shit that I like, the GM type shit that I like, because that's what I like. If I had one dream, it would be the GM of the 49ers. And believe you me, we would have so many players. Because I tell you right now, I would GM like John Dorsey. I'd make moves like that where superstar players were always on our team. I would be talking to people time and time again. The minute I could speak with them at midnight, I'd be on people's phone. Hey, man, look, man, why don't you come over to this story franchise? Baby, we got five rings. You're trying to go for six, and we need you to be a part of that. You know what I'm saying? You come to California, the weather, the sunshine, the women, and everything, brother. You know? I, I, man, I got pictures for all kinds of people, but it is what it is. You know, we got John Lynch. We'll see what happens um it's nothing against him but there have been some very bulky-esque type moves that he's made and i don't really care for that I, I i like a more aggressive gm like john dorsey and you know we'll see what happens but that's all for this video for right now so we took a look at these madden ratings you know once again at the top of the hill for us um in the 90 plus club we got three cats we got uncle sherm george kittle and joe staley in the 80 plus club, looks like we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we got 14 people, you know, in the 80 plus club. That's a beautiful thing. Y'all stay blessed. Y'all stay easy. And watch for my next video because this is more good news and a little bit more on the training camp updates. Be easy. Peace.